Hi, uh, this is Matthew Robert Payne and this is Tulu Johnson. Uh, together, uh, Matthew Robert Payne, P-A-Y-N-E, and Tulu Johnson write books together. Uh, if this is the first video you've seen of mine, uh, we've uh, written 19 books together and by myself, uh, I've written 121 books. Uh, so we're published on Amazon and I encourage you to do that. Uh, this is uh, for, for 20 years of being going to bed and talking to Jesus and the Father and angels and saints from heaven uh, whilst I was uh, getting ready to go to sleep and I just talk to them until I'm ready to sleep. And uh, one day I decided uh, with Tulu uh, that uh, we were going to have like those uh, bedtime uh, conversations uh, and record it on video. So there's 20 people uh, that uh, sit at uh, my mother's uh, dinner table uh, in in her dining room. Uh, the, it's a large table and 20 people sit on it and uh, and uh, we ask maybe four or five of them at a time questions and uh, we have a conversation. So on my right-hand side is Jesus. On his uh, right-hand side is Mary Magdalene. On her right-hand side is uh, Michael Jackson. On Michael Jackson's right-hand side is John Lennon. Um, on... Uh, the, the end of the dinner table is the Apostle Paul. The other side of the dinner table uh, on the far right is Peter. Then comes uh, my mother, June. Uh, then her husband, my father, Bob. Then uh, Toulouse, uh, former husband, Emmanuel, uh, uh, Benjamin, um, and her, her son that she never saw, Emmanuel. Uh, then... Uh, then uh, Bethany, my angel, uh, Princess Diana, uh, and uh, God the Father on the left and the end of the table. So I'm seated on the throne between Jesus and God the Father. Like Jesus is at my right hand and God the Father is at my left. And I always like to make that point because that's the, the, the new way the Trinity is going to line up when I get to heaven. I'm going to be sitting. Oh, you. And at the moment, that's where I sit. And <laughs> God's cracking up. <laughs> he thinks that's pretty funny. Uh, so, yes. so I hope uh, some of you uh, could see them. Michael Jackson uh, is in all red. He's got a red cap uh, with a black rim around the red cap. Uh, he's in a red uh, uh, suit jacket. Uh, and uh, he's got a sparkly, like um, uh, sparkly sort of things on his suit. Um, and uh, so if you can see that, you can see that. Uh, and everyone else is seated there. So we'll start the conversation with Tulu asking your first question. Matthew, isn't that interesting? With Tulu asking the first question. Thank you. Ben is not my former husband, it's my husband, Matthew. Oh, yeah, yes. I made a mistake there. Oh, yes. You're forgiven. So, who do you think I should go to first? Uh, Benjamin. Let me go husband. to the father. Oh, you want me to go to my husband? Oh, yeah. well. Get, uh, okay. Get, get that okay. part of it finished because Tulu <laughs> always talks to her husband and her son and... Uh, and so uh, we'll let her talk to them for starters today. Okay, okay. Hello, Benjamin. How are you? Hello, Tulu. Uh, it's good to uh, it's good to um, talk to you, darling. Thank you. As eyes heaven, what are you up to? What are you doing? I'm uh, helping Emmanuel uh, with his podcast. I'm helping mm -hmm. writing songs. Um, I've uh, been uh, going as as a guest teacher to Michael's uh, music uh, teaching class and uh, been uh, teaching some of the children drums. Um, 
and interacting mm. with children. Um, I've been spending some time with Emmanuel. I've been spending some time with God. I've been spending some time on the throne, listening to prayers uh, from uh, saints on earth and recording music with Michael. So I've been pretty busy. Um, you, you don't have to go to sleep in heaven. You can just spend uh, 24 hours a day up. Uh, I tend to have a rest uh, most days, but uh, you can just be busy. There's so much more time with like double the time uh, to get things done. So I just keep myself busy. And uh, I've been watching you and the daughters and uh, I really enjoy uh, watching my daughters and mm. uh, and uh, I really uh, love them and I miss them. And uh, But I'm so busy. Uh, you know, uh, my life on earth was sad because I didn't, have uh, things to do and I felt the sadness of God and the sadness of Jesus and uh, I couldn't start a business I tried and uh, I had my stutter I couldn't communicate and uh, I couldn't uh, get involved in the church and do things for churches I couldn't do ministry and uh, so I was frustrated on earth and uh, in heaven there's a hundred different things I could do and uh, I could uh, do them all well and be given a job. Um, some people just do one thing in heaven and they're happy to do it. Uh, I've, I've got a hundred things that I want to do and I just haven't got the time to do them. So I'm doing the things that seem the most important for me at the moment. Yeah, that's good. The most important thing is that you are happy. Yes, we miss you, but we know that you are in a better place and you are there for a reason. And it's rather you're rather better being in heaven, useful than here on heart and being frustrated. So it's really good to know. Uh, what do you think of the father's song? You know, the father was singing through Matthew a while ago, and that was really, really making me laugh. Did you write down the lyrics? That was an interesting one, yeah, isn't it? Uh... We we uh, listened uh, to uh, the verses and we got the hang of the song and we're going to release that song in in heaven. Uh, uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit and the Father were the inspiration behind that song, and uh, it's a really powerful song. If if it was released on Earth, it it would have like an effect like a Keith Green song. Yeah, it was so interesting because the way Matthew, well, the father was singing it through Matthew. It was like being in church and clapping your hands. It was so funny. I was just laughing. So father can really be funny sometimes, don't you think? Yeah. yeah. Well, you've, you've got to know, uh, uh, you know, um, so many people in heaven were recently on earth and there's people in heaven that were on earth in the last 20 years. So society hasn't really changed much since Michael left the earth. Um, and uh, so what you interview the father about and his, his relationship with people on earth and what he thinks of the modern day Christian is highly relatable to people who've lived this century uh, in the church. So your messages is... Uh, really slowly building up the love that God has for you and Matthew. And uh, he's opening up and up just like a flower uh, in summer with sunlight opens up and uh, becomes a, a beautiful flower, it opens over time from a bud uh, until it opens up as a flower uh, or fruit uh, forms on a vine. It uh, gets bigger and then uh, becomes a full fruit. God's uh, relationship with you is, is growing. He's getting more expressive and more honest. That's doing the people of heaven like a, a wonderful uh, thing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Do you read the books? Do you read the God conversation books? Uh, everyone, everyone uh, start, not only reads the book, but studies it. And the studies are written about it and questions are written about it. And uh as uh, each of your books are released, uh, you know, um, 
uh, Heaven Studies, uh, the book until the next book is released. So if you release mm -hmm. a book every two weeks, it's like um, it's like uh, thirty weeks, uh, forty weeks, uh, of of study of that book, and uh, you you um you and Matthew basically run the curriculum of heaven. It's like heaven's uh, the whole of heaven has gone to university, and people find the time uh, to read the books and study, and there's other writers and teachers in heaven that are writing courses around the books. Wow, thank you. I think I've learned so much from speaking with the Father. There's so many things I never knew in terms of what it is to be a Christian. Actually, I wanted to ask, where does that word Christianity even comes from? Because we do say, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. Do you know, Ben? What? Where does what? The word Christianity, where does it come from? The religion. Uh, Matthew believes uh, that uh, the word uh, Christian comes from follower of Christ, uh, basically mm -hmm. little Christ, uh, the mm -hmm. word Christian is. So we're, we're all meant to be uh, displays of Jesus. Uh, so uh, when you call your Christian, yourself Christian and you're not Christ, you're not living up to the name. Mm -hmm. Sino, Christian in name only. That's from Matthew. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah, yeah thank you. Sino. Yeah. So how's it going living with uh, Jim and Matthew's dad, Bob? Uh, June, June uh, knows how to be a mother, but she, mm -hmm. she uh, just... Uh, sees the giftings in you and she's been uh, gifted uh, by the Holy Spirit with a prophetic gift and she can see things and know things about you and uh, she's just such a great encourager and uh, she, she's got such great questions. You sit down at the dinner table and she asks you all about all the different things you do and uh, Bob will listen. Bob's a good listener and he'll ask questions about what you're saying and give you advice and give you tips. And he he doesn't speak with self-righteousness or pride. He, he doesn't speak as though he's a know-it-all. He, he, he's just a very good listener. And uh, the curi questions that come up in his curiosity. So he asks you the questions and it, I guess you to speak more about the subject and sometimes his suggestions and things he says to do are uh, right on point. So he's very much led by the Holy Spirit. So they're really uh, good uh, parent figures and uh, they treat me like their own son. Since the loss of their son, they've really invested. There was like a shifting out. One son left and another son came and, uh, and, uh, they uh, really treat me and Michael in in a wonderful way. June June has a tremendous relationship with Michael, and uh, Bob has tremendous. It's like uh, me and Michael are brothers together. You know, that's beautiful. And the, your construction is it going as well? Be, that's keeping you busy as well. Oh, you might not, Matthew might not remember. You said in that previous conversation, you said you're constructing a house for yourself and uh, Emmanuel. So I said, how is that going? Yeah, that's going to, to really well. Uh, uh, you're right, Matthew didn't remember because it was said through him, not from him. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because I could see the way he's looking. He didn't remember, so I need to remind him. Yeah. Thank you. I uh, so I I just uh I just want to tell you uh, Tolu that uh that um I'm really proud that you have 19 books now and uh you you're really in the rhythm of things and you're flowing uh really well and you're getting things done uh really well and uh I just want to emphasize that you really are discipling the people of heaven and you really need to hear that uh and 
not worry about just five people uh, buying mm -hmm. uh, the, the new series and uh, each month um, and uh, know that uh, millions of people in heaven are being discipled uh, by the books and the whole of heaven is growing up. It's like Matthew uh, cut his teeth on his 121 books and uh, preached the whole length and breadth of the gospel in 121 books. And they discipled heaven. It's just like you're going through the 121 books again and reteaching the whole gospel of God uh, to uh, the, the Christians uh, in heaven and uh, to, to Hindus and Muslims and people from other faiths that arrived in heaven. Uh, Matthew's books are like even too advanced for them and they need uh, books besides them breaking it down as part of what Emmanuel does is he goes through the books and teaches on the podcast and breaks them down. Uh, and uh, so everyone in heaven is learning and um, you, you wonder whether uh, when you get to heaven, uh, you're going to be invited to Matthew's house. Uh, uh, you know, they, they won't have dinner one night without you being there. Like, you, you're like a superstar in heaven. Thank you. And how does that make you feel as my husband? It makes me really proud. And uh, uh, I, um, I'm really well known in heaven, but uh, I, I'm proud of the effect that you're having uh, in heaven and so many people are happy uh, with you and uh, yeah and you're getting the swing of things so well that by the time Matthew comes home you'll still be producing books you'll be addicted to doing books you know we well, shall say <laughs> thank you thank you Ben that was really sweet to hear from you I think most of the time, because myself and Matthew, we can see the impact we're having in heaven. Sometimes you could get carried away with people that are buying it here and the feedback we received the other day for book three. That really made us excited, isn't it, Matthew? The yeah. one that runs the tables. It was quite extensive and detailed, and that was really good. And I got one as well from the editor, which the editor is selling the what document of the book which is very funny i never expected him to do so but it's creative of him and then he sent us one of the feedback for sadhu sunday's book that was really good as well so it's just good to hear people that they really love the book and it's having an impact in their life so thank you ben how is emmanuel let me say hello to Manuel as well hello Manuel. hello mom how are you i'm good how are you as well I'm doing good. My podcast is growing. Uh, um, I'm uh, I'm getting suggested uh, guests to come in and interview, and uh, they're uh, th theologically trained and have got a good understanding and got a lot of life experience. And uh, we we just go through a book of Matthew's or chapter by chapter through uh, multiple interviews and uh, I, I'm pretty much heading up the following up of everything Matthew and you do. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, so it's always current on the airwaves. People are always tuning in. I do a podcast every night and uh, and uh, I'm one of the most popular uh, podcasts in heaven. Um, and uh, And so... Because I'm so advanced, I've mm -hmm. been sitting at the feet of the Father all my life. Um, I can take what the Father is saying in your series of books and just take it to another level. And uh, um, we've got something better than AI in heaven that can mm -hmm. search the documents and bring out all the scripture verses that relate to what God is saying, like, it can get a paragraph and conceptualize what God is saying in that paragraph and go and get all the relevant scripture verses that say the same thing. So I'm putting together studies and putting together like uh, podcasts 
that really break that open and some of the experts that come in and speak at length. So Matthew's, uh, Ma Matthew and your book is like at realm one or realm two, and uh, we take it to the 21st realm with our interviews. And our, our interviews are transcribed and uh, get uh, produced as books. So you may have a book this sick, but the book about that book is about that thick. Uh, so oh, wow. um, it, it's a good thing that Matthew has the apostle in South Africa and has uh, feedback uh, from Ron and other people's feedback. And he's uh, been in this delusion for so many years that he actually believes it's really happening because, uh, you know, uh, he's, his work on earth is producing like a like he 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 looks at uh someone who's got a podcast and uh they've got five hundred thousand subscribers and they produce a video and one point two million people watch it and he he gets sad because he he's got a video just as good as that video and. Uh, 1.2 pe million people haven't watched it, but in in heaven there's billions, and he he's uh, material is some of the only material being taught in heaven, and uh, and uh, uh, if he only knew. Thank you, Manuel. So you you are encouraging us actually because it could be very discouraging just to say oh just five bucks out of all of this hard work i put into this well because i don't look at people that are buying it or not i know all of those resources are useful for people in there and i'm learning from the process as well i'm learning a lot from the father the conversations is something that i really so much enjoy can, so, can you imagine can you imagine being a buddhist or a hindu or a Muslim getting to heaven with little knowledge of the Christian God and then reading your uh, God's last day's message to his children, reading that series. If you'd never come across Christianity, it'd be really in debt for you. Uh, so uh, for the Christians in heaven that are advanced, we have people come behind that book and it's, expand it and make it more profound for for people uh who aren't exposed to christianity where your original uh, book is profound we have people that come in and behind and break it down and make it simpler that's really beautiful thank you emmanuel so what's what is it like working with that uh, when matthew gets to heaven let's be clear he's going to be a taxi driver <laughs> well, I don't think so, Manuel. Me, me and Elana agree. Yeah, Lana is always agreeing with everything Matthew says. So it's got a best friend in Elana. You agree? Maybe because you're, you're both similar, Emmanuel. <laughs> yeah, so what did I want to access? I wanted, okay, what is it like working with? Daddy and Michael on the podcast. You're working with Michael now, isn't it, on the podcast? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're together. We're, we're teaching and breaking down the books and uh, doing interviews about Matthew's other books and discussing things. And uh, it's uh, we've got uh, three microphones and we all speak on uh, that. And, uh, of course, uh, I'm very advanced and Benjamin is quite advanced and Michael's uh, putting in a good input uh, uh, also, uh, which uh, appeals uh, more to the other faiths and appeals to the uh, baby Christians and stuff. Michael's able to teach at that level. So we've got three levels of maturity in in the booth talking about uh, the same subject matter. So sometimes Michael says things that are quite profound too. Um, <laughs> And uh, uh, all of us are led by the Holy Spirit. And uh, sometimes Bethany gets up in the booth and starts speaking to us. 
Bettina is the boss, boss, boss lady, isn't it? So always giving me lots of work to do. But I love her and I, I enjoy working with her. So that's really good. Have you got any of your favorite book that you like from Matthew's book? Is there anyone that you particularly love? Uh, I love Heaven, Heaven Loves That series you're doing. Which series? You mean the one we're doing now? God's Last oh, Day's Message. Too. God's Last Day. Okay, God's Last Day, yeah. It's a big book, isn't it? We don't know how many we're going to write. Probably you guys know already, but we will, we're just looking forward to the future and see what happens. Thank you, Emmanuel. Matthew's think... uh, pretty much uh, got used to that's what he does at a minimum mm -hmm. each day, and then what else he does is on top of that. No, oh, you're right. He's really enjoying doing that. Sometimes he doesn't want to do anything, Emmanuel. Yeah, you got to give him time off, just like Jesus preached that uh, if you're forced to do it, you don't want to do it. If nah. you have a choice, then you do want to do it. Yeah, and I, I don't love to be forced either. So I totally understand. So, Mari, Emmanuel, have you got anything to say before? I just want to say, uh, like our dad said, really proud of your 19 books. And uh, it looks like... Uh, it looks like um, the uh, God's last day's message to his children is going to be a 20th book. And um, perhaps you can uh, do some insight uh, in Fiverr about Amazon advertising and arrange that. Um, Matthew is thinking if you sent the money to him for him to do it, then his housing commission will see the money. So it'd probably be best if you're going to spend money for you to spend it from your own account over there. Okay. Uh, and okay. then you can just watch the sales of book one to, to book four and see if they were dr dramatically affected by the advertising and see how effective it was. Yeah, you're right, because I remember that is suggesting that when we write book three or four of God Conversation, then we can start advertising. Yeah. So now we're in the process of releasing the fourth one, then probably we can do some advertisement because there's so many good things that people need to learn about God that we don't know. And it's really good for people to be... When when you be... think of it, if, if it costs you $50 or 100 Australian dollars uh, to have one person start the series, it's almost mm -hmm. worth it for, for that soul. Yeah. It is. I agree. We'll work on it. Matthew, please remind me because I might forget the advertisement. Okay? But we'll work on it together because we need to start advertising it as well. Hopefully more people will buy it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. I love you and I love that as well. I miss you. I love you. <laughs> Thank you. So, Matthew? You want to have so, so uh, God uh, has a question for you, Tulu. Oh, wow, uh, God. So, uh, are you are you happy uh, with uh, the the nineteenth book that you've produced, and what has been your favorite book that uh, you've produced? Oh, so difficult. <laughs> I think my favorite book is going to be my interview with my husband, with Benjamin Michael and John Lennon about sharing in the suffering of Christ. That's one of my favorite books. I was able to learn a lot. And a God, I love your books, God. But uh, I'm a little bit biased as well. That's my that's my favorite book. But I've learned so much from the conversation, God conversation, but I don't really go back to read a book apart from when I'm transcribing it. So I've learned so much about what you said, Father, that I never knew before. But this is so difficult to pick it because each time I'm transcribing, I'm like, wow, wow. When did Matthew say this? All of the books, transcribing Leah book, Abraham, Sarah, they're so good, too good. 
So it's so difficult for me to pick one, but I like the sharing the suffering of Christ because it was able to educate me on what Ben's life was really like when he was here on earth and what uh, Matthew, the burden that he carries on a daily basis, that sharing in the suffering of Christ is something that is so important that every Christian should embrace. So that was really a good one for me to learn because I never knew anything like sharing in the suffering of Christ. So, Father, was that what you were expecting me? Was that the book you were expecting me to pick? Yeah, do you find do you find uh that's a good book uh for you to suggest? Do you find that uh you like all of the books and there's reasons why you like all the books? So if Matthew opened up Amazon and listed each of the books, you'd be able to comment on how proud you are of each book. Hmm. Well, maybe, but Father, you know that. Even though I've written 19, I don't feel I've achieved anything. I just feel like I've only just started. You know, like, I don't, I don't feel like patting myself on the back and say, oh, you've written 19, but congratulations. It's like I'm like, I'm just beginning. I still have so many books to write. But all of these books, each time I see them, it really makes me happy. And I like to see them physically, not just seeing them on my Kindle book. So it's it's a lot of work that's been put into this, but it's something that I really enjoy. So you want me to go to each of through each of the books? No, no, I was just uh saying uh okay. I could get Matthew to uh pull up the Amazon and list each of the books and you could uh tell each of us what you think of all the books. But uh for those uh people who are listening to me, God speaking. I really encourage you to look up Matthew Robert Payne or to lose Sarah Johnson uh, on Amazon and start to buy some of these books and read the books. There's so much more in a book than there is on a video. You can listen to a podcast, but if you read the transcription of a podcast, uh, so much more of that would go into you uh, through the books. Uh, so, um I want to tell you, Tulu, I'm, I'm really proud of you. It's it's uh, really good to hear that uh, you feel that you've only just started and just scratched the surface. Um, you, you really are, you're exceedingly abundantly more than Matthew could ask or think. You're, you're the fulfillment of that Bible verse in Matthew's life. Uh, Matthew got completely worn out and uh, we we reached the end of him and uh, we told him he, he wasn't going to do any more books anymore. So he said he'll just do videos. If he wasn't uh, had the option of just doing videos, he might uh, have gone back into volunteering uh, at Salvation Army. Uh, Matthew likes to have something to do. Uh, so he took a break. Uh, and then he started doing videos with interviews for you, not knowing that they're going to be turned into books and now they're being turned into books and you're doing all the work and paying all the money. And it just uh, makes Matthew so happy. And um, we we get very happy because you're making Matthew very happy. And the uh, whole of uh, heaven is happy because they're getting uh, they're getting taught by you. Oh, thank you, Father. I'm, I'm so happy as well. Every time we speak to you, it really gladdens my heart. Not in a religious way anymore, Father, just because I love to hear from you. And I'm so glad that you gave me this opportunity. I don't think I deserve it. And I'm really no, grateful. No one really, no one really deserves it. That's that's what grace is, uh, like unmerited favor. Uh, you know, uh, my my son's just not understood and I'm just not understood where we're worshipped and we're praised the most and uh, you know you could ask a whole lot of Christians like well-known Christians what they think of us and very few of them would understand our deepest feelings very few of them really know us and uh, you know uh you you might not ask uh, Joyce Meyer on a stage 
in front of people, but if you got the opportunity to have lunch with her and say, do you think that God gets depressed with how this world is going and depressed with the Christian church, you may find a very mature, uh, empathetic understanding of me uh, mm. that she holds, but she certainly doesn't share that on stage with people that the the subject is too deep. But uh, Matthew can't imagine she'd have such a dynamic relationship with us without knowing that part. But she practically goes out and helps solve the problem rather than uh, talking about the issue. Uh, but um, Matthew, uh, Bethany, uh, his angel is best friends with with um, with uh, Joyce Meyer's scribe angel. So. Um, Matthew knows that he's going to sit down for coffee with with uh, Joyce Meyer and Andrew Womack and Heidi Baker, and they're going to be his contemporaries in heaven. When they get up there, they're going to realise that one of Matthew's books did more for more people than anything Joyce Meyer ever did. Um, and uh, she's going to realise that... Uh, there was a spiritual great on earth that she'd never heard of. And uh, and that's uh, how the first become last and the last become first. Um, he, he truly is the last. And uh, he can't be promoted. And he keeps on looking for ways to have a video be seen by 10,000 people, but we're not uh, giving him the solution. Oh, wow. Brother, that is really beautiful. I know Matthew really, really wants to be popular, but I always tell him it's better hidden. He can handle the emotions, the challenges, the price that it takes to be popular. And you said something that just me, I can preach it, even though he knows. And this is something that I wish people can start telling church your people, your children, that this is how God feels about them. And this is the state that God is. But I guess we'll have somebody like Justin. What's the name of the guy again that is always critiquing every man of God? He'll probably say it's heresy. That how can Just, you say Justin God? Justin Peters, yeah. He'll say, how can you say God is depressed? That is heresy. Because he's already said something similar about Jesus on his channel already when Jesse Duplantis came to heaven and Jesse did talk about how Jesus was so emotional and, and the guy couldn't believe it. So I guess maybe that is why Joyce do swear away from that. Whereas Matthew, you could say anything because you don't have this big platform. You could say it as it is. You don't need to polish it. You just say it and put it out there. So there's always benefit in everything, even though you don't, you are not popular, but at the same time, you're preaching the real message, which people need to know. And the few people that God wants to let them know, they will know. So thank you, Father, for asking the question. I love all the books in different ways. They, there's different pros and cons to everything. Like Sado's book, for instance, a lot of Indians will be able to relate better with our book because Sado is like something that they do. Is it Hindu religion or something? Matty, yeah. you know more about that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so that's a book that I will attract more Indian people to read. And when I visited my neighbor, I took John Lennon's book because I felt a lot of people know John. So either John Lennon or Michael Jackson, people understand who they, it is. They will be able to relate better. So thank you, Father, for spending those times with us. We really enjoy it. Have you got a question? Matty, will ask a question, then I'll come back. Ask me. One question. <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, Mum, uh, how do you feel about us uh, being up to our 20th book? Uh, Matthew, uh, it's uh, actually 19, 19 books and 100, 121 books make you have 140 books. And uh, that's something to... Uh, take our hat off. Uh, so uh, proud of you. Uh, so proud of you today when you had uh, obvious uh, 
new friends arriving uh, that uh, you spoke to Bethany about it and Bethany gave you the guidelines and uh, so easy for you to develop uh, feelings for a woman um, and uh, so I'm so happy uh, happy with uh, your routine how you get ready each day to contact Tulu and do another interview and uh, Bethany said she's gonna help you write the other six questions for the end of book five um, and uh, I'm so happy with you uh, I'm happy that uh, your housing situation worked out and happy uh, that uh, you're doing everything legal and uh, I'm happy uh, with every aspect of your life and uh, we're, uh, we're so happy to be your parents and you, you just can't imagine uh, the buzz in mm -hmm. heaven, uh, the the party, we, we have uh, celebrations every time uh, one of your books gets released, there's a big celebration in heaven, we have dinner parties and functions and uh, the first chapter of your books are read at the function and everyone goes home uh, from the stadiums with their own copy of the book and uh, your, your book uh, becomes like more than a New York Times bestseller every time it comes out. And uh, John was saying to you that, uh, John Lennon was saying to you that you read in his autobiography that uh, he was sitting down at the table reading the New York Times bestseller and uh, he said to someone, I think I'm going to have a New York Times bestseller once and um, the person says you need to write a book to have a New York Times bestseller. He says, oh, I don't think i got to write a book. I think I'm going to have one. And he has in heaven, the John Lennon book is really popular uh, in heaven and uh, he, he got thrust into everyone's knowledge. And shortly after his interview uh, in heaven, he, he was really popular. And he started to write that uh, popular music and then his book came out and uh, he, he was thrust into uh, everyone knowing him. And now he's been promoted uh, to uh, walk with the father and uh, having John in the house most nights for dinner and uh, having uh, the father come and visit, having a manual in the house really educates you on the deeper level of things. And you know that uh, I've always been hungry out of me and Bob. I was always the one seeking more and more. And uh, I, um, I'm just surrounded by spiritual giants and uh, it makes me so happy that all I had to do was uh, bring you up and you were such a joy to me. You all worry for me and you worried me at times, but I loved you. And uh, I'm so uh, sad that we had a falling out just before uh, I died. And uh, I can fully understand why you confronted me about what you did. And that was just your mental illness and catching you on a bad day. And I'm so glad we're on the same page. And I'm saddened to hear that your favorite subject, End Times and Revelation, has just been taken away from you and you're not allowed to read books on the subject or watch videos on the subject. And um, that's uh, hard for you to give up, uh, but... Uh, but uh, I'm so proud of you in so many different ways and you're having such a wonderful effect on heaven. Thank you. Have you come on or you want me to go? You can go. Mm. Yeah, I think I've got a question for Queen. I wanted to ask the Queen that. I think I watched one of your documentary and somebody said for the Queen, that when you were alive, duty came before happiness for you. So why did duty came before happiness? Well, uh, this is what I was born to do. Uh, 
it it was my role uh since i was uh promoted uh to be queen uh it just became my whole life and uh so many uh husbands uh in life put their job before their family uh, so many businessmen uh, put their business before their family they shouldn't do it uh but uh they do and uh my work became everything to me um just as uh when jesus walked the earth his work was the most important thing to him um Mary Magdalene got close to him because when he let his hair down, when he was relaxing, and most of the time uh, Jesus would relax with the sinners, with, with the publicans and the prostitutes. He used to go and uh, drink a few beers with them and relax. Uh, they were his fun times. That's when he was happy. And uh, so I did have times where I was being dutiful around my family and my friends. I used to let my hair down and laugh and uh, tell jokes and uh, see the funny things. Did Did you see such and such today? He came in and he was being all respectful and he doesn't know that next week he's going to be voted out of parliament, you know, sucker. And, uh, and so we'd joke about things and... Uh, and uh, we're funny about things, but um, yeah, it was my duty. And in heaven, <coughs> I enjoy uh, doing uh, my job. But I see <coughs> there's a greater uh, responsibility in heaven. And uh, I'm tutoring and mentoring June to step into my position so I can go uh, to a greater position. Uh, June feels overwhelmed and uh, doesn't feel uh, that uh, she's really worthy. But um, the same as you just said before, that you don't feel worthy. Um, and that's the grace of God, uh, the, uh, unmerited favor. And um, who would think that God would say that you're the fulfillment of the verse, uh, exceedingly abundantly more than Matthew could ask to think. Matthew, for years, wanted to marry a wife that would be a co-writer and he could write books with her and there'd be books up until uh, he he's, uh, he's level. Uh, and then when his wife joined him, everyone would be tuning into those books because it's Matthew and someone else and they were going to find out that it's his wife and people read the books by him and they read the co-books and like the co-written books. And Matthew I like, dreamt about that for years. And now you're not a wife, but you're a good friend of his and, and uh, his books have gone to another level. Thank you, Queen. And how are you finding heaven? Do you still have the same mindset as well that duty comes before happiness and if so what can we learn from that approach uh no i i'm happy uh uh when when uh the the way you express it <clears throat> is different uh doing uh, my duty in heaven is what makes me happy what mm -hmm. makes me truly fulfilled so it truly fulfills me to do my job in heaven. Um, and uh, I, like Michael Jackson or um, other people in heaven, I've got the spirit of excellence. I like everything done in its place and in order and to perfection. And uh, so uh, I really enjoy my job. And uh, I teach people who work with me to do an excellent job too. Thank you. Thank you, Queen. What about Prince Philip? Are you giving him some things to do? Keeping him busy? Oh, I'm making love to him every night. Making him happy. Pleasing him sexually. Now, can't oh, say that in heaven because people aren't <laughs> given in marriage in heaven and there's no sex in heaven. It's like, like men's favourite thing on earth why would they get to paradise 
with their wife and that stop. But what sort of God would stop that? Oh my God, Queen, this one is going to be con controversial. Ah, oh, you don't have to accept it. But <laughs> if, if uh, you know, Jesus used to say, uh, for those who can hear, here's the message or whatever he said, for, for those who have got ears to hear, hear this message or whatever. If, if you can hear and receive that comment by me, hear and receive it, if... You can't receive it because of your doctrinal stance. Don't receive it. I receive it, Queen. It's a good thing. It's a joyful thing to be able to know that that happens. So, yes, it's something to look forward to. So I receive it. But I know a lot of people will not receive it out there. Yeah, but you have it, like you said to Matthew, that there's not many people following him. So he's, he's not going to be called a false prophet for allowing me to say it. Oh, my God. I love speaking to saints in heaven. They're just full of surprises. Like, you guys are more interesting than people. Well, every, everyone seems to be the expert on heaven, except they don't talk to us people in heaven who know the truth. Oh, you're right. Absolutely right. So because, you're... because of necromancy, they can't talk to the saints in heaven. Like Matthew thought it was pretty crazy that uh, Kat Kerr goes to heaven and she listens to what people say, but she never talks to saints and never has conversations with them. I'm thinking, oh, that's a waste of time. Um, and uh, it's only from the saints you find out this stuff. Prince... Prince uh, Prince Philip is very happy. He's uh, he's studying. Uh, he um, he he knows so much theologically uh, now that he's he's a guest. Of, uh, he he makes guest appearances on um, on Emmanuel's podcast, uh, answering questions about some of Matthew's books. He, he's really uh, since he started the series. From God, he's really tuned in, and uh, he's made that his theological uh, study. Uh, so he 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 works with the algorithm, and uh, is a person who gets behind getting all the uh, backup verses to what God says and compiling the new book. Uh, he oversees a team of people that takes the book from that big to that big, um, mm -hmm. and uh, so he's heavily advanced he he thought uh what he was going to do in heaven is just mix with contemporaries and study but now he's putting his study to work and producing stuff that helps the whole uh, people of heaven so he's really pleased this is the first time in his life that he's having a powerful impact besides being my husband oh yeah i could relate to that because he lived like serving you all his life so it's good for him to have something to do prince philip so can you tell us a little bit about that are you enjoying it yeah uh i um uh, the, the favorite thing uh i like uh about matthew and it it uh may be different uh, for other people but uh, the favorite thing i like about matthew is he, his transparency and how he's he's so open about his sin life. And I just have to wonder, would Matthew be boring? Would would he lose his spark if he totally got over his sin life? Like, would he be less relatable if he didn't talk about that? Uh, Matthew watched a couple of Joyce Meyer sermons and he marveled that no matter what Joyce Meyer talks about she throws herself under the bus according to that subject so she may be talking about worrying and she'll say how bad she worries and what's in a couple of examples of how her worrying really got her into trouble and she'll throw herself under the bus no matter what subject so uh, I'm confident that Matthew may be able to get over his sin life and uh, not throw himself under the bus uh, on that specific one, but learn other ways and other subjects to 
throw himself under the bus, but I really like his transparency. I really love the authenticity. And I grew up uh, uh, in heaven reading all of Matthew's books and now uh, like uh, the songs that are getting re recorded today are coming out with studies. Each of Matthew's books have, have got studies and uh, especially uh, the um, God uh, Speaking series, um, extensive studies are being made and the books are being rewritten uh, in, in two ways. Uh, the books are being rewritten in a simpler way for people to understand simply in a more complex way with more scripture verses and more profound explanation. And um, I'm being involved uh, in uh, writing the more complex way um, and uh, other saints are also being utilized. So um, it's educating heaven and uh, um, heaven is rewards based. And so mm -hmm. we get rewards for what we do. No. Thank you, Prince Philip. I second that as well, that Matthew's transparency was one of the things that drew me to him. And through that, I've been able to learn a lot because if he was not transparent about his life, probably I would find it difficult to believe the things that the Father is saying. For instance, in him expressing his love to us, and that if he could love Matthew and use Matthew as a vessel, despite all of the things that he does, then what else has he got to show to prove to us that he loves us? So for me, I'm so happy that I came across Matthew and I love Joyce Meyer as well, because, you know, the, the messages of Joyce Meyer, she's real, it's very relatable. She explains the scenes or the challenges she has in her life and I can easily relate to it. I wish every man of God is like that, that we're transparent and people understand that we are women beings. We, you we know, uh, there, there's a teacher called, uh, this is Philip speaking, uh, there's a teacher on earth called Ali Beth Starkey and you watched yeah. it last week called Relatable. Yeah. Joyce Meyer shouldn't have on a video Joyce Meyer's ministries. She should have Relatable. Yeah. Like, the word Relatable sums up Joyce Meyer. Like, everything she says is Relatable. Um, I have that's what uh, Matthew uh, tries to do in his books and Holy Spirit through Bethany uh, tries to do is bring everything back to something that's relatable to how, how people can practically live out the message that's being taught. Thank you, Prince Philip. It's been good to hear from you. Matthew, have you got any questions for Bethany? Uh, Bethany, so... Uh, it's uh it's good that uh you um are watching what I do. Uh I, I look forward to uh feeling your presence when I do the YouTube shorts and when I do a uh, teaching on video and uh sometimes when I'm hearing the father speak I can hear you speaking behind the father and uh I uh I look forward to uh you know, Prince Philip said something that uh, I thought uh, the Queen sort of said something about Prince Philip that sort of gives me hope. Like, I'd love to have more children. I'd love to have children with an angel. So it makes me uh, really happy. Um, so, um, so thanks for loving me and thanks for um, sticking by me and Thanks for motivating me and speaking through me and being the wind uh, beneath my wings. Mm -hmm. um, so Bethany says, uh, it's a privilege, Matthew. This, you know, uh, every time you sin, every time you do something that uh, you you would think that I disapprove of, it makes me love you more. Like, um, you know, you see a chicken, a baby chicken stumbling and all you do is go and pick it up and set it on its feet and make it happy you know if uh if a cat's uh a kitten is not able to drink milk because the 
the bowl is too big for it to get its head over, you go and get a little of bowl so the kitten can get its milk. And uh, so um, in the same way, uh, your frailties and your sins and your weaknesses make me love you more um, and uh, want to move on your life uh, to uh, correct you and teach you and bless you and hold you up. And uh, you're a real joy to me. And uh, you've learned a lot in this interview uh, uh, with saints and uh, you've learned what we're doing uh, with your books in heaven. And I'm just so proud of you. And every time you do something great, I get rewarded. And uh, I, I just, you're, you're my favorite assignment out of since uh, Jesus was here, you're you're the best job I've ever done, and you make me so happy that uh, that uh, uh, if uh, a woman was sexually pleasured by her husband, uh, the things you do make make me in, in a way to explain it sexually pleasured. I, I I'm, I'm uh, I have to pinch myself how happy I am with every uh, thing that you do. And there's been a couple of interviews you've done this week with the father that truly broke heaven down in tears. And uh, um, he's really coming to love you and trust you. And he's really opening up more. And you've had a couple of closing statements where uh, Tallulah said any more, Matthew and uh, or she said, uh, that's the end, that's all I've got to say. And then the father's gone in and said a closing statement, which has truly uh, been uh, delightful. Um, so I'm really proud of you, uh, really happy with you, and uh, really uh, pleased to be your partner. Thank you, Bethany. It's nice to hear from you as well. Thank you for all the things that you're doing in my life. I really appreciate it. I appreciate your presence. A lot of times when I'm transcribing, I'm like, thank you, Bethany. That's really good. I'm like, am I speaking to myself? Somebody will think I'm probably mentally sick because it's like I'm speaking to myself. I know you are listening. You're hearing everything I'm saying. So thank you, Bethany. And thank for you those, for... For those people who uh, don't understand who Bethany is, if this is the first time you've listened to the video uh, Bethany's a scribe angel she's a teaching angel so every time I post a post on Facebook every time I record a video every time I write a book every time uh, Tulu edits a book or sharpens a book up uh, Bethany is working in the background to inspire the words and inspire mm -hmm. what's being done so Sometimes when Toulouse editing a book, she's rewriting the book and uh, Bethany gives her the inspiration. So Bethany plays a major role in my life and uh, so much of my reward in heaven will be given to Bethany uh, because she's truly the one who did it. Oh, that's powerful because she's truly the one who did it. Thank you, Bethany, for everything. We appreciate you. You're behind the scene doing everything. Sometimes maybe you're even interviewing yourself, Bethany. I'm not sure. <laughs> but you're used to that already. So my next question is going to be to John. Hello, John. How are you? So this is a question not to the Apostle uh, John, but to John Lennon. Uh, yeah, I need, to I need to clarify that, isn't it? Okay. Hello, John. Hello, Tulu. How are you? You don't sound I'm, happy. I'm, uh, I've just been uh, overwhelmed uh, this week at some of the questions uh, God has been answering and uh, he's been speaking uh, more in depth with me and I'm glad that you're able to uh, recognise that I wasn't uh, overjoyed because exactly. he gives me a feedback and understanding into his answers and uh, really uh, makes him sad 
that he's he's got a message that he can't communicate with the world, you know. Um, you heard that song that Matthew was singing before, and that's one of his songs, and uh, perhaps Matthew will be used uh, to uh, create more songs that will be powerful because that was a really uh, powerful song, and uh, I just uh, feel sad for him. Oh, I understand because, uh, yes, is it two days ago we did an interview with the father and Matthew said, father is sad. And even after the interview, I was still feeling it in me. I was like, oh, I'm so sorry, father, that you're sad. The creator of heaven and earth should not be sad, but that is a real situation. And when you share in that sovereign, when you see him, you speak to him often. So you understand probably more than we do. So it, uh, thank you, John. I wanted to ask you but, uh, that has been you, your relationship with the Father. How has it been like? Uh, we're really covering a lot. Um, it's really interesting that uh, there's uh, the group that add to uh, uh, the books, uh, especially the uh, interview with the Father's books. And uh, there's a team that works on expanding the books and uh oftentimes uh the father will speak further paragraphs to me uh in different segments of the book the book may go on uh for uh two paragraphs and the father will expand that with another two pages that he speaks to me uh, and so that'll be transcribed and added to the book um, so um, I'm being used to really for the father to deeply process uh, what has been said. Uh, so I want you to know, uh, Matthew and Tulu, that uh, your work is pivotal uh, at this stage. And uh, uh, the father is preparing a real army uh, to work and translate and work with saints on the earth in the future. Yeah, thank you, John. And as the music, have you are you still actively writing uh, music as well? Yeah, um, me and Benjamin and Michael uh, produce probably one song per earthly week. Okay. Um, uh, one song per heavenly week. So, uh. So be like, um, do any updates, something like that on that? So no. uh, about be... what one song every eight earthly hours, probably three three songs every earthly day. You're very busy. Where do you guys get all the lyrics? Well Where do you... Matthew created a song today. <laughs> I've never seen Matthew so joyful. And singing like that in my life, I was like, Matthew is enough now. <laughs> he's so happy. It's good when Matthew is happy. I love it when he's happy. So thank you, John. Matthew, uh, let me say hello to Michael. Hello, Michael. Uh, so when Toulouse saying hello, Michael, she's saying hello to Michael Jackson. Well, maybe hello, we need hello to Toulouse. How are you? I'm uh, especially good. Uh, it's good having uh, Benjamin coming, uh, not only uh, recording music, but coming into my classrooms and, and uh, teaching my students the drums. Uh, the kids are fascinated. There's so many kids that want to learn to play the drums. We have uh, about eight out of 30 uh, kids uh, in the class playing drums at once we got like eight drum sets and they all come and play together and uh, they're learning pretty good um, my my kids are nine years of age and so mm. they're fairly big children and uh, it's really really a joy um, I, I love um, I love spending time with your husband and uh, God uh, saw fit for him to come into my classroom and I spend that time together. 
and uh, spend time writing music together. So um, it's uh, uh, really, uh, really happy for me. Oh, thank you, Michael. And how is the podcast going as well? Are you enjoying it? I've because you're actively participating in the podcast as well at the moment. It's it's really good to not only be singing songs in heaven and educating uh, people in heaven through my songs, but also a teaching on uh, your books uh, in heaven and uh, teaching the people of heaven some fundamental principles of uh, Christianity. You've got to remember... Mm -hmm that there's a lot of people arrive in heaven that weren't Christians when they got there. So they've got to be taught the fundamental things. And the podcast is available to everyone in heaven so everyone can tune in. And so a certain portion of that audience needs to be educated in less deeper things and more fundamental things. And Benjamin and Emmanuel can talk about the deeper things and I talk about the less uh, deeper things, and it works together really well. That's beautiful. We came. I came to know that Matthew will have already known that. I came to know through these interviews and conversations that other religion comes to heaven, which is a good thing to know because we all assume that it's only Christians that make it to heaven. So it's good to know that other religion and are in heaven and they are able to learn about who God is to your podcast so thank you michael have you got anything to tell matthew uh i just uh want to uh share with matthew that um i really uh appreciate uh, uh the song that he sang today and uh really appreciate uh him uh, doing these interviews with god on I'm sort of learning uh, so much uh, and uh, the whole of heaven every three weeks, which is one day on earth time, but every three weeks there's anticipation uh, in the stadium to watch you uh, speak uh, live and uh, heaven uh, really gets excited and um Depending on the question, uh, there's more anticipation. We watch you when you're out in your kitchen preparing your coffee, rehearsing the answer before you uh, come on as God. And sometimes you're in the kitchen getting your coffee and you've got no clue of what God's going to say. Uh, and then you say to yourself, well, it's up to God, you know. He's the one speaking. And uh, so there's different things but we hear your mind and we read you and we see you and we watch you and you make us uh, very happy well that's interesting to know that's good to know Matthew you're really same thing it's good to know because you know the question way way well ahead isn't it and that yeah. helps yeah thank you oh I wanted to ask somebody oh Peter hello Peter Hello, Tulu. I'm good. How is the fishing going? Do you still have Ben coming with you to the fishing and asking yeah, questions? Yeah, Ben comes out with Bob and uh, we have uh, great conversations. And since Ben has been uh, working on the podcast and teaching what's coming out of uh, Matthew's books, uh, we've had lively conversations and Peter's been adding questions and asking questions and uh, I'm becoming a better fisherman and uh, I'm becoming more experienced and I'm starting to catch more fish. I don't catch mm -hmm. as many as Peter and Bob, but I'm getting uh, good at it. Um, and uh, fishing's more about the talking and the camaraderie than the fish. But uh, at the Payne household, they've got a couple of chefs and uh, the people that come around for dinner each night are happy to have fish meals uh, once or twice a week. And uh, June Payne uh, refuses to clean fish because uh, she did it all her life. But 
got a couple of chefs that prepare it and a lot of people love fresh fish. So um, for people who are listening uh, on earth, uh, when you catch a fish in heaven, you you take a selfie of you with the fish and then you throw it back into the ocean and uh, an angel creates a fish the same size and you put that in your bucket uh, to take home. So the fish uh, are aware that uh, they're being caught and they're aware that uh, there's going to be a picture taken of them, but they know they're going to be cast back into the ocean. So they put on a real fight. It's like a real sport between fish and, and humans, and, and they all enjoy getting caught, and they all enjoy fighting. Um, so, yeah, so the fishermen have a hard time uh, getting the fish in. So it's one thing to hook a fish, but to actually get the fish in the boat is another thing and I'm getting better at getting them in the boat but it's really hard to catch fish in heaven it's not as easy as earth um, so I've been told uh, so um, so yeah it's been fun thank you and Bob as well hello Bob it's good to say hello hello uh, Tulu how are you I'm good, I'm good. Uh, how do you feel about your son, Matthew? Uh, my son makes me cry. Uh, I, um, I often watch him and just cry. Um, it's really interesting today, uh, hearing God sing through him the whole of heaven. I saw that and... Mm -hmm. um, and I was so impressed with him. He's becoming uh, so aligned to God's heart. He's becoming so much like God. And we knew him uh, 20, 30 years ago. He used to carry this burden. And uh, and me and June told him, you, you've got the weight of the world on your shoulders. You, you don't have to carry that. And uh, Matthew says, it's just how I feel. And uh, way back then, 20 or 30 years ago, Matthew was carrying God's heart in his heart. And um, it's just becoming more expressed in these books. And honestly, while ever uh, Bethany uh, comes up with questions uh, for the books, uh, God will just keep on speaking. And the whole of uh, heaven is being discipled and growing from the books. Uh, like uh, we've said in this interview, there's uh, a less uh, intense book produced from each book and there's a more intense book produced from each book. And uh, the whole of heaven is like studying at university, someone who's a florist, someone who's a gardener, someone who's... Uh, who's a chef, someone who's a waitress, someone's a movie star, they're all being taught uh, this mm -hmm. theology every day. And uh, and it, it, it makes me so proud that uh, the whole of heaven knows my son. And sometimes uh, when he sleeps, him and Bethany walk through heaven. I spend time with him and the people of heaven just flock to him and want to know him. And uh, he's just like Donald Trump. Matthew saw Donald Trump with an audience today and he was greeting people and taking selfies with people. And uh, that's what the people of heaven do with him. He's so kind and so gracious uh, to people. And, uh, you know, he's got this fantasy that he's going to be driving taxis in heaven. Um and uh, we just let him think about that. Um, he he really only wanted to drive taxis in heaven because he wanted to greet normal people, uh, normal people to bring a taxi in heaven and then get picked up by him and he's like the superstar and they think they're so special that they get 20 minutes with him one-on-one. -on -one. And to the people of heaven, that's so precious. 
uh, not to meet him in the crowd where there's 10 people waiting to talk, but so they can just get him all by himself for 20 minutes. And uh, uh, when he goes to heaven at night, people win competitions and he eats at restaurants and they've won a competition and they get to speak to him for an hour. And um, this is really precious to him. So he's going to be like a prize you'll see on TV, how they do fundraisings and uh, certain handsome guys are raffled out uh, a date with this guy. Uh, you'll see that on a TV show. Well, Matthew's like a raffle. Right? People uh, work really hard to win a competition and they get time with Matthew and it's going to happen in heaven. So uh, if he did that regularly when he was in heaven, it would take out his desire to drive a taxi because that's all he really wanted to do. So, um, yeah, so mm -hmm. that sort of makes Matthew happy to hear that. So I'm really proud of your son. And uh, when you walk out of your room, sometimes uh, you stop at a wall and scratch your back on a wall and I always say hello to you when you're doing that. And I'm so pleased with you and so impressed with you. Thank you, Bob. Hello, Princess Diana. I'm trying to go around the table today, Matthew. Uh, hello, uh, Tulu. How are you? I'm good. How are you as well? I've uh, been uh, doing uh, really good. Uh, I've, uh, I've, uh, Matthew's not aware of what I've been doing. Maybe you could ask uh, some other questions. Okay, so what question? Okay, what have you got to tell me and Matthew? Uh, so I want to uh, share with you uh, that uh, you should uh, 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 order your uh, 20 books and have a copy of your 20 books. And uh, when you've got the 20 books in your house, line them up on a bookcase and put them there on a bookcase. And uh, when when you've got them all there in your house, take your children out to a restaurant and celebrate. This is a celebration of my first 20 books. And you can do it for 20 books, 40 books, 60 books, 100 books. And um, I want you to make a special celebration with your children. Tell your children you've done 20 books now and Princess Diana told you, and they wouldn't even know who I am. They, they probably watched uh, the uh, the they, uh, show they on know. Netflix, uh, so yeah. they know who I am. And just tell them that I told you to take them out for dinner. You you mm. don't have to go to an expensive restaurant. You can just go to McDonald's if you choose, but we'd prefer you go to a a nice restaurant and have a nice. Uh, meal served by waiters and waitresses and uh, really treat yourself. And if Matthew was in Australia, uh, he'd go out to the restaurant with you. Uh, if uh, Matthew was uh, over there, he'd come to the restaurant with you. But perhaps you can ring him from the restaurant. Oh, thank you, Princess Diana. That's a good idea. I've never thought of that because I'm not so good at celebrating, isn't it? This is something I need to learn, to learn to celebrate. Oh, thank you, Princess. I really love that idea. Mm. Matthew, have you got a question for Princess Diana? Uh, so uh, have, have, you, uh, ha have you and John been growing closer? Yes, Matthew. Uh, you're always, um, always impressed with with what I said about uh, John Lennon and um, was it Mary Magdalene that said she liked John Lennon or Princess Diana? It was Princess Diana. Yeah. It was Princess Diana. So John Lennon's fine. He's really growing and uh, all he talks about is the Father and Jesus. So I'm learning about that. You really, um, you really got good books. I'm really learning a lot about the father and they're pretty deep i sort of um i've got two books I, I i read your book and then i read the simpler book 
then I read the more profound book and it it's really uh it's really your book that's in the middle that I can understand best. The simpler book breaks it down simpler for me. Once I've read your book, then the simpler book, then I'll read the more profound book. But it's really your book that I'm in the middle, like it's hitting where I've matured in Christ. Uh, but the simpler book uh, breaks it down easier for me to understand certain things easier. And then I read the more complex book. But um, there's cer certain books that will suit everyone in heaven and... Uh, and uh, the podcast really explains uh, the simpler book and the more profound book and the book itself. It has the three different levels. Like Emmanuel, Emmanuel describes the profound book. Uh, Benjamin uh, describes your book. And Michael explains the simpler book. And the three voices cover each chapter of your book. Uh, in the three different levels and so it's like 20 it's like 20 days uh, the podcast goes on 21 days the podcast goes on three weeks of heaven time and then in about three weeks the next book comes out and they go through that so that's a little bit of information you weren't expecting that information but that's why there's three speakers michael explains the simple book benjamin explains the book that you write and emmanuel explains the deeper book deeper question for daddy okay just say hello say hello hello hey alana how are you yeah so have what? you got a question for your daddy does he like watermelon does he like watermelon? <laughs> uh, did, did he have watermelon on earth? Uh -huh. Yeah, so sure. so he showed, showed the watermelon. What? Uh, That's what she is. Uh, you're eating some watermelon. Yeah, he likes watermelon. He 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 likes strawberries too. Yeah. So I was almost dead. Then I was going to eat strawberry, but it fell. It, it fell. fell. It fell, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Look straight to the camera. So. Are you shy? No. I'm just I'm thinking of a question. You're thinking of a question. Okay. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. Daddy wants to say he's really proud of what a good little girl that you've been for your mother. I'm really proud of the way you behave and how you're respectful to your mother and how uh, you do what your mum says. And uh, I'm really proud of how you spend time by yourself and with your other sisters when mum's doing interviews and not coming in and disturbing her. And I'm really happy with you. I think about you all the time and I pray uh, I pray uh, to God for you and your life all the time. Mm, say thank you, Daddy. Thank you. Well, I got a question. Can you read my mind? Yeah, I can uh I can know what you're thinking about from time to time, yeah. <coughs> Is it funny? Yes, that's the time when when I was thinking of a teacher <laughs> and I'll say what in my head. <laughs> what did she say? You're amusing yourself. So basically, I was in school, did I was thinking of a teacher that I was saying the words about her in my head. Okay, she was thinking about a teacher and saying the words in her head. About right. the teacher. About the teacher. So what were you thinking about the teacher? Um, Wasn't very nice thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it, Lana? That's very true. That's very true. <laughs> Did the teacher offend you? No, that uh, it was in my head. You were just in your head. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Do so you want to say hello to Manuel as well? Hello, Manuel. Hello, my hello. sister. 
you say, say your name right. She said, I might say your name right. Yeah, yeah Emmanuel. How do you spell that? It's E M M A N U E L. Yeah, I'm so confused. You're so confused. <laughs> Oh, do you want to, have you got any question for Emmanuel? Oh. Have you got a question for oh. Emmanuel? Do you like what's bad? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have question. <laughs> do you like watermelon? <laughs> okay. Thank you, Lana. <laughs> yeah, so that's probably enough for today, if that's okay. Yeah, I just wanted him to come and say hello. Yeah, well, before you go, let's ask Father something. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Hello, Father. Just, I think there was a question that was in my head for Father, which I've totally forgotten now. But I'm going to ask you, Father, this question. Is it true if you are with God, you are blessed? And if you are not with God, you are not blessed. If you are not, you're not blessed. Is that true? Well, uh, man was made in my image, so is man blessed? Mm. Yeah. That's, you don't have to necessarily have said a one paragraph sinner's prayer to be blessed. Oh. Do, do you think uh, Elon Musk is blessed? Yes. Yeah, so blessings doesn't uh, determine, being a Christian doesn't determine your life being blessed. It's a very religious mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Not Thank accusing you, you of being religious, but Christians think they've got all the answers. There's, there's people who are not Christians that are a lot happier than the Christians. Mm. It's part of the reason they don't want to become a Christian. They don't want to get depressed. Wow. That's sad. But they need to become a Christian for the right reasons, isn't it? They don't need to be tied to religion. They just need to know God, not necessarily being a Christian and practicing. Yeah, that, they don't necessarily have to know me. All they have to do is know you. Hmm. That's another way of looking at it. Never thought of it that way, God. You're always coming out with surprises. I think that's the one you're leaving me with today. They don't need to know you. They only just need to know me and see God through me. Well, is yeah. that what that means? Yeah. Oh, wow. Thank you, Father. I just wanted us to talk to you before. I know I didn't get to Jesus, but that's okay. I'm saying hello, Jesus. I acknowledge you. Yeah, hello, Tulu. I'm mm -hmm. really proud of you, Tulu. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, I liked uh, the book on the sufferings of my sufferings. I like mm. that book too. I especially like that book. So we've got that in common. You remember that I said that. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I love you all at the dinner table. And uh, hopefully you all have a good day as we are here on the heart. Yeah. So much you. You can so, uh, if you listen to this video and you liked it, please press like. Uh, if you're one of the regular uh, followers or you're new to uh, the video and you enjoyed the video, I'd enjoy a comment. Uh, if you're new to the channel, this is one of uh, uh, the videos uh, that are on the playlist called uh, Conversations at the Dinner Table. Uh, if uh, you're new to my channel and you want to see other Christian content, please consider subscribing. God bless.